love hate relationship with that, Lorelai. I have a love hate. Everybody, it's your girl Jay, and today I am here with my February wrap up 2020 part three out of three. I read a total of 17 books this month, which is still mind blowing to me. If you guys are interested in part one or part two, they will be linked down below. So without further ado, let us get started. <sighs> so the first book I'm so going to talk about in this part of the wrap up is a line. In the Dark by Melinda Lowe. I ended up giving this a 2.5 out of 5 stars. So this book follows Jess who has been in love with her best friend Angie for as long as she can remember. Angie has no idea the way that Jess feels about her and that is when she begins to start falling for a private school girl named Margot and everything seems to change. So this book was marketed as a dark psychological thriller personally. I do not agree with that. I think it was more of a like stalking your best friend book. I am usually a fan of stalker books, which sounds really creepy, but like you by Caroline Kepneys loved that book, thought it was super spooky. This one just didn't have that same vibe. It was just like a creeper stalker story. The only thing I felt remotely interested in during this story was the chapters about Jess's art. She draws comic books and she draws parallels from her real life and puts them into this story that she's created. The book is split into two parts. The first part is like the backstory and it's kind of like building up to part two where a girl goes missing and it's like a murder mystery and it's told in like interviews and things like that. The weird thing about it though is that it has this weird shift from first person to third person and it just like did not work well. I wasn't the biggest fan of the surprise twist ending. Like it left me just being like, oh, oh that's it? That was what all this build up was for? Like overall, it was a very fast read, but I can't say that it was necessarily entertaining in any way. And therefore, 2.5 out of 5. The next book that I have is A Replica by Lauren Oliver. I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. I have a love-hate relationship with Lauren Oliver. I either love her books or I just don't care about them. This was one of the ones where it was like, eh, don't really care. It follows Lyra, who is a replica created in Haven Institute. She ends up escaping from Haven after it is blown up with another replica named 72. And that's when they meet Gemma, who is the daughter of a very important person in the Haven Institute. And they end up meeting on Freak Accident. And it's like the story of them discovering secrets about themselves and how their stories kind of interweave. The one thing I did really like about this book was that there were multiple ways to read it. You can either read all of Lyra's chapters, all of Gemma's chapters, or you can like alternate the two of them. I listened to it on audiobook, so I listened to all of Lyra's chapters and then all of Gemma's chapters. That worked for me. I really liked Lyra's chapters, not a really big fan of Gemma's chapters. I found Gemma's chapters to be very fat phobic and I just like was not here for it, honestly. Lyra's I found very interesting. I definitely, like I said, liked Lyra's chapters better. I just found them more thrilling and entertaining. Gemma's chapters were more like a backstory of Haven and how she fit into that. Just, I didn't care. I will say, was not the biggest fan of either of the romances. Like, the book would have been 20 times better in my opinion if they just scrapped the romance and it was solely based off of what Haven is hiding, what it means, blah 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 blah. But that's just me. And I was not a big fan of the ending. It was very abrupt, which I guess like that's supposed to make you want to read the second book, but I was just sitting there like, what the heck? Like that was stupid, but whatever. Overall, I think it was an interesting concept, but it wasn't anything like over the top for me. So three out of five stars. The next book I have is Emma in the Night by Wendy Walker. I give this a four out of five stars. Three years ago, 15 year old Cass and her 17 year old sister Emma disappeared in the middle of the night. Cass returns and she is telling a story about an island where the girls were held captive by a husband and wife. Forensic psychologist Dr. Abby Winters begins spending more time with Cass and her narcissistic mother and she starts to realize that things are a little bit off about Cass's story and she decides to look a little bit further into the story and 
that's what this is all about. I really like this twisty turny book. I am very interested in personality disorders. I have like a minor in psychology and my favorite class was abnormal psychology which was all about like mental illnesses, personality disorders, that kind of thing. So I have a lot of background knowledge so I was really into seeing a book all about narcissistic personality disorder. I'm also a huge fan of unreliable narrators so this book really worked for me. I also really loved the unstable, <laughs> unhealthy family dynamics in this book and I loved seeing how they manipulated each other. I really liked the alternating perspectives between Cass and Dr. Winters. I think that it was a really great way to explore the mystery of the girl's disappearance. I definitely had a few theories about what happened to the girls. I ended up being wrong, which I'm also a fan of because with thrillers I usually can tell the ending very early on in the story but I was completely off. Definitely think that the book was very fast-paced, it was very addictive, like I wanted to keep reading to figure out the mystery behind the girl's disappearance. So overall, super quick, super fun, definitely recommend if you're interested in a really good thriller. The next book that I read was Let's Call It Doomsday by Katie Henry. I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars. It follows Ellis Kimball who is a prepper. She is convinced that the world is going to end soon. Her therapist and her family members are trying to get her to work through the anxieties that come from this belief but nothing seems to be working and that's when she meets a girl named Hannah who claims to have visions and that she has seen the end of the world. They end up teaming up together to find a prophet named Dan who is supposed to be able to help stop the end of the world and it's like the story of that. I don't know what it is but something about this book did not work for me. I think that it was probably the friendship between Ellis and Hannah. It was very toxic. Hannah was just very manipulative and was like playing off of Ellis's anxieties which just made her more anxious and it just like made me angry throughout the whole book like I just wanted to rip them apart from each other and be like do not talk to each other this is not healthy but obviously they're book characters so I can't do that. I also was just not a fan of Ellis's family. I thought they were very judgmental. They didn't really seem to want to help her. It was more like why are you not better and like that's not how mental illness works. Sorry it's just not. The one redeeming quality of this book was Tal. I think that he was very good for Ellis. He helped her work through a lot of things but then again it's kind of like the love conquers all trope so it's like eh. Do I really like it? I don't know. I did really like the positive therapy plot line to the story. I think that the book did a very good job portraying that therapy can help people who need it and I like that. But I do wish that there were more scenes with Ellis and her therapist because mental health was such a huge topic in this book. I think that it should have been more prominent. But overall, like, it was average. It wasn't really anything like super amazing in my opinion. So 3 out of 5. And then the 17th book that I read for the month of February 2020 was The Raven King by Maggie Stiebauder. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I have finally finished The Raven Cycle and I can finally jump on the bandwagon completely. I am really upset that this quartet is over. I know that there's like the spin-off series following Ronin's story but like these are my boys. Like I love them and I'm sad that it's over. I I'm a huge fan of the relationships that are in this story, the friendships, the romances, like everything. I'm just here for it. I also really like that Henry had a big role in this book. I personally think he's hilarious. I love him so much. I really love how intricately the story and plot from the previous books were woven together for the finale. I will say that my biggest complaint is that there are still so many unanswered questions and I'm sitting here like reeling about it. Like I need closure and I didn't get it. So 4.5 out of 5 stars. Alright everybody, so that was my part 3 of 3 wrap up for February 2020. Let me know a couple of books that you read down below or let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them and I'll see you all in my next video. Goodbye!